I will be just discussing briefly about those questions that I had given the answers yesterday. I think uh, theory also we are almost finished with the syllabus except for those questions, isn't it? So uh, keeping that view, I think today and tomorrow we will finish the theory as well. The practical, I think one question I will still give, I mean to say it from comes I forgot so that one I think and today and tomorrow we will wrap it up so let us just have an overview it's a very short class so first was link and loader so that I'll discuss below uh, this is one question that was there in the question paper uh, absolute path and relative path so whenever we talk about path so what is a path basically it's a kind of a location okay that we give to a file or a folder that is there okay in the system so that is being uh, given uh, by uh, you can say by the os itself so uh, a path uh, to a file can be a combination of uh, this uh, slash symbol and alphanumeric characters okay so whenever we write a path, okay, so path also can be classified into two kinds. One is the absolute path and the other one is the relative path. So when I say absolute path, it means I'm specifying the location which is of uh, that. Respect to the root directory, okay, so basically we have to start with the root directory then followed with a slash, okay, after every subdirectory we have to um, uh, I mean to say specify. So let's say, for example, I have a file like this, okay, in uh, my current directory, but I have to map my current directory from the root directory. So how do I do that? So something like this, maybe. Okay, so if I'm here, home, then uh, I have entered in a direct uh, subdirectory, let's say KT. So inside KT, I have the file abc.sql. So this actually will give me the path of the current directory that I'm working and also uh, I can uh, uh, I mean to say uh, uh, work on the file so here basically what I have done I have uh, uh, created isn't it uh, I have uh, what did I do I have created okay I think this is so I have created a file uh, under kt okay which is uh, uh, under uh, which is uh, KT is uh, I mean to say under the home directory. So under KT again, what I have done, I have created a file abc.sql. Okay, it's just randomly I have taken a name. So this basically will uh, give me the path. Okay, of the directory and the file that I am working on. Then absolute path is def is uh, basically defined as uh, specifying the location of a file or directory from the root directory. In other words, we can say that the absolute path is a complete path from the start. So uh, let's say uh, this is which one? Yeah, uh, absolute path that I was saying, right? So it's basically that we are uh, everything we are specifying the location of the file with respect to uh, the root directory. Okay. So in an absolute path, it's a complete path from the start of the actual file system from the directory. Relative part is what? Relative part is nothing but the part where we are working at present. Okay, that means the present directory part. So it starts at your current directory and never starts with this comes only if we are following a absolute path. Let's say, for example, I'm in the home directory and directly I want to map to a, uh, let's say, uh, a subdirectory and want to create a file or do some work, isn't it? Then I have to specify something like this. We have done in labs also. Okay. But in case of a relative path, we are basically concerned about uh, the uh, present directory that we are working in. So this is also one diagram, like we have the root directory, then we have created the uh, subdirectories, and again, uh, home is a directory which has, again, its subdirectory, so something like that. Okay. So Unix offers a shortcut in relative mean, we can also uh, I mean to say move from one directory to another. Let's say we are in, um, let's say in one of the directory, like for example, uh, uh, home, okay? 
home. Then we have entered into a directory called KT. Then from KT, we have entered into ABC. Now, suppose if I want to move from ABC to KT, how do we do that? We already saw that, right? What command do we use? PD with double dots, isn't it? Two dots. So this will help me to go one level up. Okay, so that means I was in ABC, but now after performing this operation, so, so after performing this operation, uh, what will happen? I have moved one step back. That means I'm in which directory now? KT, okay. So this is basically very simple. Okay, so this may be asked in Viva also. Then uh, another important question is Belady's LMLE. So uh, generally what we have seen is that uh, with respect to page replacement uh, schemes, if you remember, okay, how we had performed page replacement, we had used some uh, algorithms, isn't it? P4, LRU, isn't it? Then optimal was there. So, uh, Belladi uh, anomaly is also, uh, you can say, uh, an anomaly which results during uh, the page fault, okay, that occurs, but how it happens. So, generally, um, as we go by the definition, Belladi anomaly is the name given to a process where increasing the number of page frames. What was page frame? Here, what is the uh, number of page frame here? Three, okay. So if we increase the number of page frame, it results in more number of page faults for a given memory access pattern. So what is this trying to say is that uh, if suppose we have a situation such that if increasing the frame size, okay, or the page frame, then the page fault number increases, then this kind of issue or problem is uh, known as your Belladies anomaly, okay? So we have tried to show with an example, this is a very important uh, question from the examination point of view. So if you look here, uh, we have taken a reference string. This We have taken it randomly. This is a reference string. And we have taken that the uh, page uh, frame size is three. So let's say when one will enter here, we will get page fault. When two enters, we get page fault. When three enters, we still get page fault. When four enters, again, what? I have to replace, so which one should I replace? So we are following first in, first out. That means the one uh, which has gone um, first is the one it should be uh, replaced. So which one should be replaced out? The one which has gone first. So who has gone first? First in, first out. So who has gone first? We have to report. Okay, one has gone, no, okay. All right, this, is, this has, should be, have been four here, okay uh this one okay i'll correct and update in the uh in the in the this uh, notes okay so one should have gone here so the uh, okay okay so it should have been uh, four here then uh, next time one is there one two three okay four okay so four should have been here, the one which has gone first, isn't it? This should have been four, correct? So this, I'll update. Four, which one? Okay. This one. Okay. Yes, yes, four will be at the top, you are saying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it should be like that, okay? So uh, I will just update this part, okay? And I'll send you again today. Ah. So, uh, but still like page fault will be there because four was replaced, okay? Then similarly, uh, when one comes, so one comes, then uh, which one I should be replacing? If one comes, which one I should be replacing? Yeah, two, so in that way. So there'll be a page fault. Okay, so total number of page faults, let's say, uh, are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll update this uh, slide and send you. Don't worry, huh? So uh, at uh, for page for the size of the page frame being equal to three, we got total number of page faults nine. Now let's say we have a situation that there are uh, the size of the frame has increased; it has become four, and we take the same reference string. Then in that case, uh, I'll update this one and send. Let's say we got uh, uh, the page fall number increase. That means 
uh, by the end, if I count, I got how much? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So initially, for the a small uh, number of frame size, the page fall was nine. But the moment the frame size increased, then what happened? The page fault also increased. So in this kind of scenario, basically, uh, we say that uh, there is an anomaly which is called the uh, Belladis anomaly. Since he founded this problem, so that this anomaly is called your Belladis anomaly. Okay, I'll update this one, this uh, replacement. Okay, so probably it is done through uh, LRU. So I will update and I will send. I think it's clear. It's not so difficult because it's related to page uh, page replacement only. Is it clear, everyone? Anyone? Any questions? Today students are quite less. Oh. Okay. Then uh, we have DMA. Do you remember DMA? Any uh, in uh, COA you have done right DMA? Do you want me to repeat again uh, DMA also direct memory access? But in the notes I've given it very simple and very clear. Do you want me to repeat DMA? Okay. So I have given like what is a DMA, then the working principle, okay, everything, how will it uh, uh, release, I mean, to say take the control from CPU, so everything is there, how it will link, which is very easy, then theoretically you will understand. Uh, this one I wanted to speak, um, the demand paging, this is also very important. So uh, the what is demand paging, this is the process of loading into so we have the page here the information of the pages isn't it is maintained in the page table so it is the process of loading the page into memory which memory into the physical memory whenever page fall occurs that means if suppose in the physical memory uh, let's say we want to uh, access page number let's say two okay but that page number two is not available then in that case what do we do we basically access the page number that is should be available in the memory and that is being brought to the main memory for execution so that is basically demand paging so here the working principle i have explained step by step. so if suppose let's say if a cu cpu try to um, refer to a page or uh, uh, let's say uh, try to get hold of a page that is not available in the main memory then it will generate a kind of a that means uh, th that signal will indicate that there is a, some problem in the uh, memory access part okay we are unable to access some kind of uh, memory location then what will the os do the moment the interrupt is issued the os puts the interrupted process in a blocking state for the execution to proceed the os must bring the required page into the main memory so now the os based on that interrupt which was generated okay will uh, halt the process for some time because the process cannot execute its work until and unless the page is brought isn't it so what will do the os will try to fetch the page uh, from the page table into the main memory okay so the os will search for the Required page in the logical address space so that will be available in the page table the required page then will be brought from the logical address space to physical address space that means there will the page uh, uh, like whatever details is there in the page table that will be translated in memory okay and the information will be available However, we are releasing the page memory. so again we will suitable page placement algorithm okay so by the operating system which one it will take and accordingly the replacement and the updation of the page in the main memory will be 
definitely the page table also will be updated as to where the page in the main memory has been uh, uh, like uh, put okay the signal that will be then sent to the cpu to continue the program execution that means uh, it will be uh, told to the other i mean to say uh, system okay to the cpu it will send the message that okay we can now uh, release the process which was blocked and it can access the content and uh, continue its execution okay so that is basically demand paging how it works it's just basically how we are uh, bringing that page if it is not available in the main memory okay from the uh, logical address space and then again the page table is being updated once the process which wanted to access the page gets that page okay or the data then what will happen it will uh, i mean to say start its execution and complete it okay then uh, uh, next uh, what we have is the block input output so what is that let us see so generally today in hard disk uh, in open systems uh, disk today in open systems store data in fixed blocks okay that means every block has got certain amount of data which is being stored okay so generally it's how much 512 bytes okay so when i say block io what does it mean it means that uh, a file system is sending a block of data okay to whom it is sending it is sending the block of data to, uh, to let's say a hard disk drive or maybe uh, to a hard disk drive okay why is it sending so that uh, some data can be written into the drive or maybe whatever uh, let's say uh, data is there to, in the hard disk we can fetch it so again i mean block in uh, io it mean it that we may have an application one purpose it may be that it wants to update or write information into the hard disk or maybe uh, the data which is already available into the hard disk to fetch from there okay so how does it do generally by using the uh, the logical block address so again it is a address generally given to uh, that block of data which is being sent okay so file systems or application uh, will uh, take the file request into the block io applications can do file input output or they can uh, remove the file system and do block okay okay these are very much theoretical so you can read these things okay then another uh, question which is being asked in most of the time it is like see what are the questions it may be asked from this part what is a logical address what is physical address it may be asked what is logical address space what is physical address space or they may ask the differences okay so whatever the things are this uh, entire answer will help you to answer a question similar to this okay so we already know that logical address is the address which is being generated by cpu okay keeping in point of view the program used isn't it whereas physical address is actually the location that exists in ram I think we already have studied in paging also when we were dealing with that. Okay, then uh, logical address space. When I say is the total set of the logical addresses generated by the CPU. When I say logical address, I'm just talking in general. I'm saying that logical address is nothing but the address which being generated by the CPU for a program. But when I say logical address space, it's like a set. Okay, that means all the set of logical addresses that the CPU has generated. That means the total, all I have to count all, all the addresses that were created. Whereas physical uh, address space also is similar, but basically here means it means that the total set of the physical addresses that are being um, available in the main memory. That is basically physical address space. Okay, so whenever we are doing the mapping from uh, the logical address to physical address, we need a hardware unit. We already know MMU, memory management unit, which will do this uh, uh, mapping between logic address being generated by the CPU to the program, which will be actually be residing in the. Okay, so a logical exists physically in memory. Okay, whereas physical address is the location in the memory in the RAM that can be accessed. Uh, logical addresses are generated. This is important in the compile time. 
uh, and uh, load time uh, address binding methods, whereas they differ from each other in runtime address binding. Okay, this is not required. This I'll be talking in loading. Okay. So this is still here. It's fine. Okay, this is sufficient. Okay, that line actually should have been in the other answer. I think it's clear only because little bit uh, we have already uh, discussed uh, about that. The next is pooling. Okay. So anyone heard about pooling earlier in CO class in second sem? Anyone? Okay, so let us do this. Uh, spooling is basically a method in which the data is temporarily held. Okay, it's like a kind of a temporary buffer that uh, we are using it to finally uh, be given to the uh, uh, to the devices. Okay, in in the computer. So spooling, if you see, it's a process in which the data is temporarily held to be used. Where is it held? In the buffer. In some kind of buffer and executed. That means the data is executed from the uh, spool buffer data is there in the secondary storage but if suppose i want to make use of the printer the printer directly will not be able to uh, access this one what will happen first of all cpu will put it in a buffer memory and then from the buffer memory we will be able to the printer will be able to access and print the document okay so data is stored to and uh, sent to and stored in the memory or other volatile memory okay so this is a volatile memory because once the work is done, the data is erased. Okay, so until the program or computer requests and completes its execution. Okay, so that is basically pooling. Okay, threads. Now one thing, uh, in threads, uh, one more question is common: uh, the thread life cycle. So that I think you have done in OOPs also, isn't it? So that will be similar only. Okay. So what is thread control block? It is similar to um, process control block only. So uh, basically it will keep track of the information of the threads which are being generated in the system. So what are the various components that we have here in the thread control block or TCB? So first is the thread ID. So what is a thread ID? It is a unique number or it is a kind of an identifier which uh, basically identifies uh, the thread which is being created. Then thread states. So what is thre thread states? Basically, it is basically the status of the thread. Okay, and that means that what state the thread is at present in the system. So basically from the, the state of the thread, we will be able to know, okay? Then next is CPU information. What is CPU? In uh, CPU information is basically uh, to know about how far the thread has finished its work, okay? What data the thread has consumed, so all those information basically will be maintained by the CPU information. Let's say, for example, what next instruction the thread should follow. So that also will be maintained in the program counter, isn't it? Then thread priority. What will the thread priority do? Thread priority will basically give weight or priority like a process. No, we have a priority for processes also. If let's say a higher level process comes and the the lower level priority based process has to be suspended isn't it so similar like this also here also if a higher priority based uh, thread comes okay that uh, the other threads have to wait okay they'll be suspended for a short interval of time so same thing like this. then a pointer okay so there are two pointer pointer to process that created this thread pointer to other threads that were created by this thread so again one thread uh, will be created by a uh, by a process is it a process gen generally creates the thread so the thread will be pointing to the process which brought him that means the process which created that thread will be pointing because it has to point who has created him and basically if that thread again creates its uh, let's say child threads then even it has to point to those child threads so there will be two pointer one pointer will be pointing to the process which brought its existence and the other pointer will be pointing to the child threads which it has produced okay then linking and loading 
So what is linking and loading? So let us see first linking first and loading also. Let us see. Uh, linking and loading are basically uh, programs which are being used by the operating system for smooth execution of any program. Okay. So linking, what it does is it takes the uh, code which is uh, produced by the assembler. So assembler generally object uh, codes, isn't it? And then it combines all the object codes to uh, produce the executable code by the system. Okay, so in other words, what they have said is that uh, on the other hand, sorry, uh, in the other way, loading what it does, it loads this executable module to the main memory for execution. So this has to be very clear. Okay, linking and loading, what are those? Those are the programs which we need basically for making work any program. Linking what it does, whatever the assembler generates, that means the object code, that it will be taking in and it will combine them. That means all the object codes which was generated by the uh, assembler. Okay, it will be combining them. So linker will be compiling them and it will uh, produce, uh, let's say, uh, 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 another, you can say, uh, 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 module. Okay, so this, this is the compass. It's a uh, kind of an, uh, merging up now so all the object modules are loaded into one single module let's say okay so this will contain all the object modules okay or the object codes generated by um what is it called assembler okay so establishing the link between all the modules or the functions of the program in order to continue the program execution is called linking then what is loading Loading, what we will do is it will bring the program, okay, from secondary memory to main memory. Okay, this is general. On the other hand, loading loads this executable module. That means what module? That means all the object codes which was generated by the linker. It will be, suppose it is under this, uh, let's say, module, that is the load module. This will be given to the loader. Okay, this will be given to the loader and the loader with the help of some uh, system based libraries will be converting that into uh, your uh, uh, into your uh, machine level instruction and it will be uh, executed in the main memory. Okay, so that is uh, what is linking and loading. The difference is like it may be confusing. So that's why you have to be a little bit cautious. Okay. So the way I have written, you have to write like that only in order to get good marks, okay? Then differences also they may ask. So that's how we have segregated. So the difference between linking and loading is that the linking uh, generates the executable file of a program, whereas the loading loads the executable file. That means the linking will take all the object modules in uh, from uh, generated by the assembler and it will convert into a load module. This load module is also called what? Execute okay whereas once this is done then whose role will come the loader's role what will the loader's do it will take this load module load module means what the executable file okay obtained from the linker or from the linking into the main memory will execute so ultimately it will convert into the machine level okay the linking intakes the object module okay I, the same thing only the object of a program generated by assembler however the loading uh, intakes the executable mode generated by the linking same thing only the linking combines all object modules okay uh, links uh, the library functions okay same thing only okay so uh, as of now um, these are remaining so i'll be solving today or tomorrow and i will send you and uh, theory uh, uh, assignments also I'll be generating too. So uh, more or less we have covered, I think. Uh, Arbaz, I think we have covered, right? The question paper more or less. Okay. Okay, okay. So lab also we are done and uh, uh, theory, I guess uh, this uh, with this uh, last five questions, then everything will be done. So uh, we, I will generate two worksheets. Let's see, I may generate three also. Because if I give two, the questions will be more in one assignment set. Okay. Mm -hmm.
So let's see two or three. I'll just check and I'll put a deadline because uh, uh, if suppose uh, this assignments of theory will be counted in the uh, this thing. What is it called in general? Okay. So that way we will be doing. And any queries, anyone others who are there? Any query? Who are there? To check. Any question? Okay, so I think most of you have uh, done uh, and operating systems whenever the exams will be conducted should not be a problem now I think because um, we have done and labs I would request you to practice online as much as you can if you are unable to do you let me know accordingly but those questions whatever I've given right from the class time in class I have given two uh, Sheets, isn't it? Worksheets uh, for commands only. So that also you have to do because commands are easy and they are more easy to score rather than program. So in program in shell, if you make one mistake, uh, I mean to say it's very difficult to locate, isn't it? But uh, for commands, you if you know the syntax and if you can do whatever is being asked in one line or two, and that is sufficient to get good marks. But uh, others, uh, I mean to say in shell script, yes, if you are thorough, if you are practicing uh, regularly, then it should not be a problem. But uh, otherwise, uh, that will help. So uh, practicals is completely over. And um, uh, theory, I think tomorrow or day after, I'll just check uh, these uh, rest uh, five are there. So I will uh, generate the notes maybe by tonight and I'll explain. And one more thing, uh, there is a webinar also coming up, isn't it? I think I have sent in the group webinar was there. So that webinar uh, you people have to attend. OK, I, it's it's not compulsory, but I would suggest because it's a very interesting and it will help you in internships also. So that's why it's very important for you to attend. So I think then it's a wrap up for today. OK, so theory we have finished, you can say. 99.9% uh, .9 and with the notes giving tomorrow, then everything will be done. Okay, okay then see you then.